All right. Good morning, everybody. What is up? It is, uh, I can't even remember what day it is, Steve. It, I think it's Wednesday. I believe it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday, April the 8th, 2020, the, the worst year ever. Uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we're starting dark this morning, dark. Uh, you know, but we're, we're about to listen. I can spin it pretty easily around. We're, we're here with Raul and he's going to show us a really cool program that he's created called block studio, um, that, uh, and, and, and teach us a little bit of, uh, programming. Uh, so we're really excited about this. Why don't you set this up, Steve? You, you, you yeah. know, Raul and you, you know, this program pretty well. So yeah, Rahul's awesome. First of all, um, about, it might be three, four years ago, um, somebody introduced me to Rahul and said, hey, I know you teach game design, and I know this guy, I think it was at the University of Washington, would that be right? right. Okay, who's creating this uh, game development platform that, for all intents and purposes, doesn't require text coding, per se, but, um, but does have a very interesting approach to designing games uh, that is so accessible to young kids as well as, you know, more advanced uh, you know, developers that want to do some interesting things. Great tool for like prototyping and 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 creating kind of quick um, games, but also deep enough that you can go a lot further with what you develop. Um, and Rahul has been so incredibly generous over the years, um, meeting at all odd times for him as he's on the West Coast with me and my students to share his passion about about game design and and code programming and this platform, so um, I was really gr grateful to uh, to have Rahul reach out recently and and say, oh wait a minute, we got to have you, you know, on one of our streams. So good morning, Rahul, and thank you as always for joining us. Good morning, Steve. It's my pleasure. Uh, so I'm Rahul, and I've been working on this uh, game as well as creative authoring environment, really called Block Studio for a few years now. Uh, and I'd like to introduce you to the ideas behind Block Studio and then give you a demo of how you can create a game in Block Studio from start to finish. And then I'll show you what other people have been using Block Studio to make online because it exists and it has existed for several years now. So in that order, let's get started. So. So when we think of uh, programming, we actually think of multiple things conflated into one word. And historically, programming has meant two separate things. And I want to draw that distinction before we start doing anything with Block Studio, because it'll make it clearer why Block Studio exists in the first place. So programming has kind of historically meant two different things. The first is, this is dating back to the 50s and the 60s, by the way, when you know we were figuring things out, like what is it that we do using a computer? So the first part is the algorithm. And the algorithm is really the sequence of steps that you need to solve a problem. And the second part you can think of as really coding, which is telling a computer how to perform those steps, you know, precisely, unambiguously. So if you think about it, the algorithm is kind of like the what needs to happen in order to solve your problem. And the coding is how you want the computer to perform those steps. Now, these are kind of separate, right? But these have kind of gotten mixed up, really. And so what we kind of think of as coding today is that really we, we think of programming and coding as interchangeable words. And I'm kind of here to make the point that they are not the same. And so today I want to show you Block Studio, which is on the left half of my screen, where you will be programming, but you will not be writing code. You know, you, when you write code, you think of text that you are entering into a uh, an IDE, an integrated development environment, or some text editor, and then you're running that code. But let's see what that looks like. So 
I'm going to walk you through the process of making a simple game end to end. And then we're going to step back again and see how uh, it actually works and what it means in, in terms of this programming paradigm that I'm talking about. So here is this very simple game that we're going to make. The idea is inside the Block Studio environment, I will assemble some of these sprites. I want to create an interactive game where when I press or click or tap, depending on whether you're using a desktop or a laptop or a tablet or a phone, when I, when I press this, I want this smiley face to move to the right, move right a few places and stop specifically. When I press this, I want the smiley face to move to the left and then stop moving. So I'm about to create this interactive program now. So the first thing I do is I press play, then I press this button, then I show the change that happens in response to this button, and then I save that change and I have the behavior. Similarly, to move left, when this button is pressed, I want this to change by moving to the left and I save that change and I've created a very simple program. I'm going to add a few more pieces of behavior, then we'll circle back and see what's going on and how this makes sense in terms of the Block Studio programming paradigm. So let's add another type. We have all these shapes here and different colors here. By choosing a shape and a color, I add a new type, and now I can make a block of this type on my screen. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make some room here. What I'm going to do is not only can we move, but when I press this, I want a little star to appear next to the smiley face. And I can make it a little smaller too. And this means that it's going to move in that direction. And I've added another piece of dynamic behavior. Notice that this was just a blank canvas when I started. And we've been building up this game. It's been a few minutes, and we already have some interesting game behaviors. These are common game mechanics, and we haven't written any text code as yet. In fact, we will never write text code inside Block Studio. Uh, since you can move and since you can kind of uh, you know fire and shoot at things, what is it that then you know the next thing that's kind of obvious is to have some targets. So let's say I want to be able to hit this with a star, and then when the star hits it, I want it to disappear. So what you can do is when these two collide, I can have this be deleted. And because this particular behavior only depends on the kinds of objects involved and not on the specific object, it works for all the objects. Uh, all right, so you've seen something that's fairly non-trivial that would requires several dozen lines of code to write in Scratch or whatever your favorite programming language is. And this was created in about five minutes without writing any text code that you could see. So what's going on? So let's circle back to the, my Scratch pad here. And let's, let's talk about what kind of pro what programming we're doing here and how it's happening. So <clears throat> In Block Studio, there's a very simple programming model. I think I'll switch to a slightly wider name. There it is. OK. So in Block Studio, the programming model is when you see something, change some particular thing to look like something else. So in terms of the objects that you see on the screen, what were we doing all this while? What we did, well, the very first thing that we did, let me switch to a blank screen. So the first thing that I did was, when this is pressed, this should move to the right. So in terms of that, what we have up here is, when the right arrow is pressed, then something should happen to the smiley face, right? So that's the smiley face should move right, right? 
So this is what is called an, a rule. This is an example of a rule in Block Studio. So all the behavior that you see in Block Studio is created, is built up by adding rules. And rules can work together in interesting ways, like I showed you. You can fire a star, and then there's a different rule that says when a star hits a robot, the robot disappears. So these two different rules come together into this game mechanic where you can aim and hit something to make it disappear. So these are, this is the basic template for any rule in Block Studio. And so if you have one of these rules, what it does is it looks for every occurrence of smiley face and it makes that smiley face move right. What I mean by that is if I have, let's say I have a different smiley face over here and another one up here. When I press this, it makes all the smiley faces move right because the rule just says when a right arrow is pressed, move the smiley face right. It doesn't refer to a specific smiley face. In fact, if I have a second right arrow up here, it does the same thing. This might seem confusing at first, but think about this. This makes it generic and this gives you the actual power of programming. If you had to create this rule for each of the smiley faces by hand, it would be quite tedious and you wouldn't actually get any of the the generality of programming. So for example, up here, if I had created the rule that when a star hits a robot, the robot disappears, and I did that only for this robot, I would have to create that rule again for this robot, but I don't have to because over here, the rule is when the star collides with the robot, Then I love your dedication is... to drawing the robot. That's awesome. <laughs> That's... I, I was waiting for a good time to weigh in on the drawings, but yeah. I, I felt yeah. like drawing robots was a good place to weigh I in. Try. On it. I try. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> Thank you, man. So, um, so when the star hits the robot, you you pick out the robot that has been uh, hit, and then you know you delete that robot. So this is an, a second example of a rule. So when when I created this game in front of you, what I did was I created four rules. So I created a rule such that when the right arrow is pressed, the smiley face moves to the right. Another rule so that when the left arrow is pressed, the smiley face moves left. Another rule where if the red circle is pressed, a star is emitted from the smiley face. And the fourth rule where if the when the star hits the robot, the robot is deleted. So this is kind of the Block Studio model, and this is how rules work in Block Studio, and it's quite powerful. But how does this relate to something more familiar, something we already know? Say, for example, how would you be doing this in Scratch? So let's go back to the simple example. There's, there's an arrow here. When I press the arrow, the face moves to the right. So let's draw uh, a kind of one-to-one -one comparison with Scratch so you can understand what's going on here and uh, which part of the uh, the work Block Studio is kind of saving you from and what, what what is it that Block Studio is not doing for you? Uh, clearly, Block Studio isn't reading my mind and doing everything. Otherwise, it wouldn't be programming. I wouldn't be actually doing anything if I didn't have to use my brain at all. Um, Let's uh, imagine how this would work in Scratch. So uh, I'm assuming people are more or less familiar with Scratch, but if they're not, I'm going to walk you through that. In Scratch, what happens is um, you kind of place objects like this on a stage, and then you write what are called scripts, which guide the behavior of these sprites on the stage. Scripts are text code snippets, OK? So for this uh, particular, um, sorry, I think I can draw that better. So for this arrow, you have a sprite. And for the smiley face, also, you have a sprite. So what does the sprite that would achieve this uh, kind of analogous behavior look like? So for the right arrow, what you would do is you would have a snippet that says, when I am pressed, 
And this is kind of like an event that you can plug into this handler. That's not super important. Uh, and it kind of looks like these blocks that are snapped together. When I am pressed, you would then send a piece of uh, uh, what's called a message, and you would broadcast this message. Think of it literally as you know this actor shouting to the other actors on the stage saying, hey, this has happened. So you would broadcast this message. Uh, so you would broadcast a move right message. And so this, these two lines of code, they govern the behavior of uh, this particular sprite. And what it means is what it says. When this is pressed, this message gets broadcast. What this means is this uh, kind of literally this sprite shouts out saying, you know, move right. And this message is sent to everything. So, you know, if there are all these different uh, sprites on, this, on the stage, all of them will receive this message. So now clearly the second half is for them to do something with this message. Uh, I'm gonna draw this script for this over here. So over here, what happens is when I receive move right, And so that's another event handler here now. Then what's going to happen is at this point, if you're, uh, say, you're eight or nine years old, somebody has to explain to you the concept of coordinate systems, which isn't ideal. Uh, but to move right means to change something called your x coordinate and to increase it by some amount. So uh, I would say add to, to x or something like that. And once you have assembled these two pieces of machinery, now you will have the behavior. I don't have Scratch open in front of me, but you can, you can understand how this fits together. This sends a message, and then that sprite responds to the message. And that's how you do this in Scratch. And I showed you how we do this in Block Studio. I'll do it again. And now, hopefully, it kind of makes a little more sense. So I'm going to flip back to this other page that explains the Block Studio model. We have, I'm going to annotate this so that it makes sense. Um, so when this happens, change this into that. OK, so let's do that again. So we create, so we, we do this left to right. So the when part is uh, the arrow being pressed. So we press the arrow. This is uh, Block Studio asking, OK, show me what happens, what to change, and what to change it into. And so what to change is the smiley face. What to change it into is to move it to the right. Um, and so when we save that, that is saved now. You see that icon on the left. And whenever we press that, the smiley face is changed so that it moves to the right. I so have to add one silly question for a second. What is the graph paper um, app that you're using? Or is that built into Block Studio? No, I actually set that up last night specifically for this stream. So I, uh, let's see if I can show you. So I happen to have one of these uh, tablet things, you know, with a stylus. And uh, that what that allows you to do is, you know, use this instead of your mouse to draw. Sure. And then I have it hooked up to this software called Bamboo. Uh, this tablet happens to be made by Wacom or Wacom, I don't know how to pronounce it. Yeah, yeah. And they also happen to make this uh, app called Bamboo. And Got it. Uh, the free version lets you have some basic notebooks that you can use. Cool. I would ideally wanted, I ideally wanted a black background with white text, but you, you have to pay for those. Um, <laughs> anyway, so that's what I'm using. And you have different uh, pencil um, thicknesses and colors. So uh, you have this model of programming where you sell your, trigger code based on certain events, and then you select things to change, and you tell Block Studio how to change them. That's really all there is. It's very simple. And if you think about something like games, this is a very good fit for games, because that's all that games really do. A game is mostly event-driven. When you press a key, that's when your character 
moves or jumps. When your character runs into something, that's when something happens. When your character uh, fires at something and that you know the pellet hits the NPC, that's when something happens. So this is a very good fit for games. So let's kind of extend this to show you uh, that this is not you know just motion and shooting. You can do other things, right? How does this um, qualify as not just making games but programming as well? So I'm going to add something that lets us keep track of how many of these uh, robots we have hit. Okay, so uh, let me. So on the right hand side, what I've been switching among these are little screens, really, and you can use them to save different levels of your game. Or if you're making something like an animation, this could be different scenes. Or if this is uh, uh, people often make uh, little stories in Block Studio as well not just games. So these can be scenes in your story. But anyway, these are different screens. So I just cleared up the other screens. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, once we hit all of these robots, we're going to go to this screen. And then you know uh, maybe that's like your win screen. So I'm just going to put some text here saying you win. Uh, maybe I'll make it nice yellow, make it large. All right. So, uh, so our our goal is now we need to somehow count how many of these we have hit, and when we've hit all three, we need to uh, transition to that screen. So, how would we do this? Let's see. So, it's not immediately obvious how you would set this up in a programming language like this, where there isn't text. The obvious way to do this in a, a in a you know a programming language with text is to declare a variable and then to set it to zero. You initialize it to zero and then you increment that variable. That is, you add one to that variable each time you hit one of these, and then you keep checking every time you increment it. Has the value reached uh, say three yet? And if it has, then you know you have hit three of them. Uh, so in Box Studio, what you do instead is you can use position to encode value. What I mean by that is we can have a block over here, and we can say this is at the 0 position. And we can have another block here. And so we can say, you know, this is 1, this is 2, and this would be 3. And so we can have this move over every time we hit one of the robots. And so when it has hit three robots, it'll hit that is, it'll collide or overlap with this blue block over here. And if, um, if I could say something here, um, yep. th what was so interesting is when my students started using this, um, we were talking about things like, oh, wait, what if, you know, in, in game design, we talk about a scoring mechanism or mm -hmm. lose conditions. And, and it was so neat to see the kids come up with this idea, like, wait a minute, I don't know how to, I don't have a variable for robots, but yeah. I need to figure out a way to do that. And they did exactly what you're doing, I think even without necessarily learning it from you initially, which I loved because from a problem solving standpoint, it, it, it just shows how, you know, once you start thinking about how to solve that problem, Block Studio has the way to do it. You just have to be creative in it. So that level of thinking that I've seen my kids go through to do that was has been pretty awesome. So I appreciate that, um, you know, that that kind of thinking is, is what the kids are doing. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. So I should uh, definitely um, give credit here. So as the creator of Block Studio, it wasn't apparent to me how to do many things using this paradigm. Just because I invented doesn't mean I was able to immediately intuit how to accomplish uh, a particular game mechanic or pattern inside of uh, this new you know, universe, I guess. And more than once, it's been the case that some user has surprised me, pleasantly surprised me, and, set, and kind of created some artifact online. And then I go and see, what is it? How are they doing it? And then I understand, wow, they have really invented a new thing that I didn't really know how to do in Block Studio. So I actually, I don't know if, I don't recall if I figured this out myself or if I copied this for somebody. and. I am, you know, I'm happy and it's, it's reassured to hear that, you know, your students are figuring this stuff on their own. This happens a lot. And I, I think it's one of the key strengths of Block Studio that um, 
the initial vocabulary is small, but you can build on top of it. And by the power of programming, this uh, incremental building soon compounds and you have non-linearly more power. It's not like mm -hmm. you can move and you can do shooting and great. So what else can you make? Well, the answer is a lot. And I'll show you some artifacts that others have created and they don't look like this starter project at all. I always show people the starter project, you know, and it looks the same, the smiley face and a couple of arrows and a robot. But there are some fairly advanced, uh, impressive artifacts. I'll show those at the end. I don't want to break the flow by showing those first. Um, so that's, that's, now called that you've a, that's called a hook in marketing, people. <laughs> you don't just learn programming on this stream. Learn how to keep keep the viewers watching. Right. <laughs> So um, let's let's make this uh, thing that I kind of already outlined. So let's actually do it. So what, what are we trying to do? So quick summary, we're trying to make it so that this moves over every time we fire and hit one of the robots. So we're going to add another one here. So maybe I can sketch it out before I do it. So the idea is we want to do this, where when uh, this happens, not only is the robot deleted, so we have this happening, and we say, and also do another thing. What is that? And find, well, let me not use a blue color to indicate a green square. And take the green square and, you know, move that right. So we want both of these things to happen when this happens. And Block Studio lets us do that. You don't have to be restricted to doing one action based on one event. That's another uh, thing that really gives it a lot of power. So let's do that. So we play the game. We have this happening where when you can see the little icon here. I hope it's kind of large enough to make out. There's a star colliding with a robot. And what happens when the star collides with the robot? Well, there's some code in there. And there isn't text code. How on earth do we edit this non-text code? So you remember how we created it? And we edited it the same way. So we can click on this. And it kind of pops up the code that we demonstrated, which is that you know this gets deleted when this crashes into that. So within the context of that event occurring, we are now editing the code. So we can, for example, say, you know, I've changed my mind, don't delete the robot, for example, but uh, I'm not gonna do that. What we want to do is we want to move the green square right, so I'm gonna do that. So we have just edited the code without using text. We have indicated that we are doing this, which is indicated up here, the robot is being deleted. And we have also indicated that the green square is to be moved right, which is over here. That makes sense. So now that we have these two pieces, we can click done. And what happens now is the green square moves right once, the green square moves right a second time. And now, you know how in a for loop, this looks like if something less than something, we would check maybe if counter is less than three. So this is the guard right here. So when we do this, now this crashes into the guard and that's our check. So we know that we have reached the value that we were looking for. And that means we now have this event up here where the green touches the blue. And so all we need to do here is just basically we need to add another one. Maybe I'm just gonna scribble it in the corner here so that it's all on one page. So what we need to do here is when this collides with that, then what do we do? Then we basically want to go and load this windscreen. That's what we want to do. So when that happens,
Sorry, it's a little cramped, but you get that picture. So when these two collide, we want to load that screen. So how do we do that? So we can always edit uh, the code like I showed you. So when this happens right now, nothing is changing on the screen. Nothing is being changed into anything. But we can just select the screen, and that's it. You know, If you wanted to not load that screen, it can cancel it back like that. But that's it. There's no code text code to be typed into a text editor. You just click on it, and that means when this is touching that, this screen is loaded. Let's save that. And so now, when we play our game, the counter is incrementing. When the counter reaches a certain value, it goes to our win screen. Again, this would be a lot of code. And I didn't show the, say, the equivalent scratch code for this, but you can imagine there would be a variable that would be initialized, it would be incremented every time that broadcast message was uh, received. And then it would also be checked against a threshold. And when the threshold was reached, some other you know, code would have to run. So we did this kind of simple exercise where we built a game with all these pieces. Uh, what are the, you know, what are the next steps after this? So Block Studio lets you do a lot more than just these basic uh, pieces. There's more vocabulary. For example, uh, I haven't shown you, but you can resize things so you can scale things up or down. So for instance, if something touches something, you could have it get bigger or smaller. Things can be hidden. Hiding things is handy because, for example, I can hide these two blocks. They'll still move around, they'll still collide, and they'll still cause the action to happen. But my game looks cleaner. I don't have this uh, obviously visible variable block sitting around. It looks kind of tidier and like, oh, there's like some magic, right? Arthur C. Clarke uh, wrote any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Oh. So. I, any any anyone who can quote Arthur C. Clarke is a friend is a friend of mine. <laughs> love it. I I I love rule that that the the um, the program is kind of running on the right hand or the left hand side there, and you can actually see. So even even for um for young students, young learners, when you're mm -hmm. first teaching them programming, I taught. Um, I, I taught computer science grade two to eight. So, so nice. I was teaching like grade twos how to code. Um, nice. And one of the things that I was always trying to do in Scratch is help them make the connection between what's happening on the screen um, when they're playing and what's happening in their code. And, and you know, the, the real thing is finding the links between those things. And, you know, this simplifies that even more yes. uh, with the idea that, that you're, your your code isn't complicated um it's 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 graphical like even more graphical than scratch in the sense that you're right. literally using the actual the actual sprites that are being run are right. the things you're at that actually contain the code um right. which is which is great um so i love that feature um it it, it makes it so much more simple for um young learners to make the connection between what is happening in their game and what's happening behind the scenes uh, right. and it's really neat to see it like running quickly and it kind of flows through right that it's a really cool feature thank you see th that's what i kind of aimed at with something like scratch this how part is always uh, something you have to make a an extra mental effort to perform you might already know that you want your game to do this but that doesn't mean you immediately understand how to convey that to the computer. Now, for something like the domain of games, it should be much easier to convey that to the computer. This is not true of everything. So if you're writing, I don't know, uh, some program to calculate complex 3D geometry, that's a lot of linear algebra and math. And there may not be a quick way to just say, I will drag something on the screen and it should infer the code. But if you're moving sprites around in a 2D game, just moving the things around, changing the state, as it were, of the game should be enough to tell the computer, here is how I want the game to be modified. Please make these modifications and memorize them, you know, and run them and replay them in the future when the same event occurs. So 
the idea the the goal is kind of to try and remove this much well kind of elide it as much as possible so that learners can focus on this cuz this is the actual meat and potatoes of computer science right this is what we want people to learn like problem solving and this is i would argue a fundamental part of computer science whereas this is almost incidental so if you think about it whether you write code in scratch or c++ or java or javascript or you know you rewind several years it was fortran or before that it was cobol who cares that you know changes but what you are doing with the programming language isn't changing you are instructing a computing device it could even be a human you know a lot of women were computers in the world war right they were computing tra tra trajectories for ballistics right but a computer is somebody who carries out or something that carries out a sequence of steps so figuring out what the steps are that is the key to problem solving and therefore if you want to teach computer science we today end up forcing learners to not only learn this but also learn this at the same time and this really increases the cognitive load in an unnecessary way i posit that we can use something like block studio to keep the cognitive load focused on the fundamental important parts of learning programming and elide the this non essential part so all right that's uh, you know some of the dry theory behind it let's go back I into the <laughs> let's go love back it. into the um the demo so so like i said there's things like you know hiding blocks and stuff like that so what are kids making with this um are there any like questions from maybe and like an online audience that I want to take right now Mike so, or so the, cha the chat doesn't the chat doesn't have any questions they're definitely commenting on how accessible this seems it is mm. uh and they're commenting on how easy it looks like it is to use and and definitely echoing some of the things that I've said about uh about being able to um you know make this accessible to early learners to young kids yeah. and stuff like that <clears throat> So mm -hmm. so there's a lot of good comments there too. Yeah, one of the things that I love too Rahul which would be great to show is um kind of like Scratch you have a community aspect where people can very easily yeah. publish their games, yeah. play each other's games, give feedback, rate them. Can you show that and maybe even show a few examples of some of the neat ways that kids or or people in your community have used yeah. Block Studio? Yeah. That that's a great question. Thank you, Steve. So, um Block Studio is three things. It's programming paradigm, this way to program that I showed off. Um, it's obviously also an app that is available for free online. I'll just leave this up here, by the way, so that I don't forget. Um, for free. <laughs> free. <laughs> free. Stuck at home. Mm. Free app. <laughs> free. Okay. Free. Um, let's see what's. So just put, go to www.blockstudio.app and you can get it. You don't have to install it on your phone. You don't need anything. It just runs inside the browser. Ideally, you'd use a desktop or a laptop or a tablet. A phone becomes slightly challenging. Mm. <laughs> But, uh, anyway, you can get it over there. All right, let's go to the website. Once you go to the website, you will see this screen. Uh, if you're following along at home, I encourage you to just watch right now, and you can go through the tutorials later. Uh, so it's it's easier if everybody doesn't hit the website all at once. Um, so once you create a user account, you have the ability to you know start a new project here. Like I walked through the demo with all of you. Uh, once you select a screen size, you you get to you know make the app inside of that user interface once you have created at least one project it'll show up inside your projects 
So I have quite a few projects here. They're all listed here. I've been working on this for a while. Uh, you can go to your project and then you can edit it. You can set a title here, you know, and you can put a description here. Whoop, sorry about that. Uh, I think I pressed something else. Anyway, uh, and then you have your favorites. Your favorites are things that you have bookmarked, essentially. You see projects by other users, and you can, have, can bookmark them. So let me go through my favorites, and I'll show you what other people have been making. OK. So here is something that I want to show. Um, people make games in Block Studio all the time. It was created for making games. Uh, but what's surprising and e extra wonderful about this is uh, I, as a creator, get to see kind of something very meta, right? I'm enabling other people to create, so I get to see their creations. But I thought I'm enabling them to create a certain kind of artifact, games. But every once in a while, they'll create other things. So. This person has created a like a public service announcement. Like, you should recycle. Like, why are you littering? So this is an, an animation about why you should recycle. And here's the harmful effects of recycling. You drop your plastic trash in the ocean. A turtle eats it. And that's not good. It's much better if you drop your plastic bottle in the trash can in the recycling bin. Uh, so this is one recent project that I really like. At the stop bar here, this play button, it kind of lets you see all of these uh, kind of curated set of uh, projects. So you can see all the latest published projects. You can see things that are kind of trending, if you will. Uh, you can see this thing called like, the Hall of Fame. So I'm just going to click on one of these games here. Now, Block Studio lets you use your own custom artwork. Um, there's a lot of features that I wasn't able to show you in the demo. So if you upload your own artwork, you have a game that looks you know, not like that uh, robot and smiley face game anymore. It kind of looks like this very full-fledged game. Here is like a world that you explore. You kind of walk around in this world. You could make like a fun. You could. Uh, I, I don't think Glenn is watching right now, but uh, you could make a pretty cool farm game in this. I bet. Pretty much, yeah. And <laughs> so that's, that's what this person has kind of created, right? They've created this game where you can go around and you can kind of harvest the grass, I guess. And they've made transition points, so when you go down here, you can have transition to a different map. So let me show you a different one. Um, there's lots of games that are so these this curation is mostly done by me by hand there's a whole bunch of games here um oh uh this one was an interesting one somebody made a game where you had to solve this puzzle but you had to solve it while being very uh well your reflexes have to be pretty fast let's see if i can just full screen this that would make it easier to see maybe yeah Mr. Speedy. So if I let go of the cursor keys, uh, you know, I kind of lose. So I have to keep turning. And it's kind of easy at first, but you can see it's it gets much harder as the game progresses. Oh, I'm no good at this. <laughs> uh, anyway, you get the idea. So there's 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 different kind of mechanics that people are using in these games. Uh, what else is in here? Uh, somebody has uploaded some of their, you know, Mario fan art. So they've made a, le a little Mario inside of here. Just like you can build up things like I showed you with a counter by, you know, assembling different rules. So you can build up other things. So for example, 
what's this? Oops. Oh, nice. <laughs> There's a mix of different kinds of. Uh, That's great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get him. <laughs> Let him just say. Drop a, I don't know if they, that kills you. Whoop. Whoop. Yep. Oh, yeah. This is this is booby trap. So if you go here, whoop. <laughs> oh, this is great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Uh, this is the level select screen. So, you know, if you press three, you'll go back to the third screen. Uh, so this is another kind of thing. Let me see what else is in here. There's, uh, oh, this one is another one that I want to highlight. This is, so somebody took a uh, Flappy Bird and they recreated it in, in, in the studio. And they did a really good job because they made their own birds and everything. Um, and they, so remember how I said there's no text? So uh, was it Mike who said uh, that you want to have a score counter? So score counter is actually possible in Block Studio. Again, I figured this out later. It's possible because uh, score is just digits, right? And digits are just numbers. So you can have just 10 images of the digits 0 through 9, and you just create 10 rules to increment, and you're done. And then you have a score counter. This looks great. So they have this Flappy Bird in here, but they also have this shop on the left because as mm -hmm. you clear this, as you clear this, your score is incrementing. Oh, I'm and good at you this. Said, so there is there is a, an image editor as well in Block Studio. Uh, no, uh, okay. I haven't able to make time to do that. But there's a lot of uh, free image editors available online. So, right. so then this the beauty, though, is they can, they can create the image anywhere almost and bring it in. They can create it anywhere and they can bring it in. So oh, so, for, so everybody um, has their own profile. And for example, uh, you can actually create a, so I've kind of been using Block Studio in different ways. Uh, one of the ways is, for example, you have a game that looks like a rectangle, but you can have a square grid. And you can treat it as a bitmap editor. And you can use that to create like a little bitmap you know, image with these blocks as pixels. And you can use that to set up your own uh, profile picture. So oh, I think a lot of people are hitting the website at once. That's, that's cool. That's cool. Um, I will just need to <laughs> one uh -huh. second. <laughs> <laughs> this is that's, great. That's, that's a good problem, problem to have. have. That's a good problem to have. So success. I know. <laughs> we got so this so is why many, he, uh, plan, he, plan, he planned. He planned that. That behold the power of the plan, cloud. He planned that. That's also that's like guerrilla marketing right there. <laughs> oh no, the it's website's programmed. overloaded. Too many people are using it, my it. awesome website. If you press the space bar five times really fast, it'll crash the website. <laughs> so, I've got to, I've got to put more resources into my awesome website because so many people are using it. Pretty much. <laughs> and That's... so we can scale that up right now. Let's bring it up from one to ten. There we go. Look at how easy <laughs> that is. You would think you would think that games would be able online games that are like always crash when they launch would be able to just you know do that. Well, a lot of them <laughs> run their own infrastructure. They are yeah. so successful they can't do this. So I'm kind of in this middle ground. So it's okay for me, I guess. Um, this is quite interesting that enough people hit it <laughs> during this web stream that it went down. <laughs> anyway, while while it recovers, so I want to continue talking about this. So. <clears throat> So Block Studio has this um, what I want to what I like to call affordance. Uh, let me, let's see. Here we are. All right. So it has these affordances. So what's going on here? So it's 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 uh, text free, right? So that's clear. It's also, uh, it's concrete, as I like to call it, visually concrete, but I'll just say concrete. What does that mean? It means you don't use code to talk about things that need to happen. So uh, do you remember that broadcast stuff and all that? So 
if you look at the sketch I made of here, there it is. So when I press broadcast, when I receive add all this, so this doesn't capture what's actually happening to the sprite. It's like it's like if you were teaching somebody how to I don't know cook eggs on a stovetop, and you said uh, instead of you know doing this, what you told them is here here's a pro here's a robot that holds a spatula and it holds a pan, and now you must instruct the robot how to move the spatula to cook your eggs. It's kind of like that. You really want something that you can directly see which is the concrete aspect, and you want something that you can directly manipulate. So the other part is direct manipulation. Oh. So these things come together in kind of unexpected ways in Block Studio. So people not only make games, they make stories, they make animations, they make quizzes, they make puzzles, they make codes. Uh, let's see if I can find this code. Let's see if it's running now. I hope 10 was enough for it to catch up. <laughs> what is your main focus for today, Rahul? So, um, I was literally just thinking, what is my <laughs> main focus for yeah, today? Yeah, we, all need, we should put that at the beginning. Of our that is a great question. So yeah. I think I actually covered my main focus for today, which is to impart you know, this new way of thinking no, no, about no, programming. I was, I was just kidding. Did you see on your screen? Your desktop. Said, good morning, good morning <laughs> Rahul. What is your main focus for today? <laughs> <laughs> That's That's the nice chat, yeah. chat, chat you're waiting to. What's your main focus for today, chat? Tell us. Tell us. Yes, your main focus is. I got to think of mine. <laughs> what is your main focus for today? I love it. Yes. Uh, meanwhile, I'm going to see if I can get this thing back up and running. Uh, this is this is wonderful to have this problem. But uh, ideally, I would be able to show you a couple more games before we ended the session. Though, if people have questions or uh, things they would like, I would be happy to, you know, yes, try and so answer them. In terms of the, um, and yeah, by all means, chat, jump in with questions. One question was, which is neat, would you recommend this for high schoolers who already have programmed their own video games in the computer science discoveries curriculum? Um, you know, so that, uh, you know, that's an interesting question. So people who have already done some programming often tell me that they enjoy programming in Block Studio even more because uh, of its concrete direct manipulation nature, where you can instead of figuring out that something needs to move by, you know, if you want Mario to jump to here, you can just make him jump to here instead of saying this is 2.5 units of motion or 2.75 units, and then you kind of fiddle with those numbers until it looks right. So at least I had one girl, for example, use the word scratch requires too much engineering. And I kind of thought that was a good way of putting it. Um, there are kids who have completed, you know, lots of Khan Academy and all that coding courses. One of the most prolific users here is, in fact, a user who is, he has progressed beyond Block Studio, and then he has, you know, come back to Block Studio. So I think that was quite interesting. He already is a competent programmer in other programming languages, but he finds the workflow here sufficiently rapid and creatively fulfilling that he keeps coming back and he is in his own right now, like a community elder, I would say. He makes artwork for others. He makes tutorials, things like that. Oh, that's so great. And then speaking of tutorials and things, you also have a number of built-in tutorials on the site. Um, so there is a lot of opportunity, which yes. I love about this platform, you know, is that it, we've already showed that it's pretty intuitive right, right out of the box. But if you go, you know, certain strategies and things you can learn um, from those tutorials right in there. So I mean, right. it's so, you know, I love things like this, that while we are, you know, kind of stuck at home and learn, looking for interesting um, things to to do and learn, um, you know, you can go right to Block Studio and, and jump right in. Um, we had uh, an interesting <laughs> comment by Dr. Kutsu that his focus today was for finding one thing that he could be wowed by and apply to his own work or life. And uh, he accomplished that at 9 a.m. this morning, Rahul. 
So Thank he's you done for the day. Good, he, he's done for the day. Dr. Tsutsu so can take the rest of the day off. Man, that'd be nice. Let I encourage anyone you. who wants to, you know, uh, feel free to get in touch with me. So, I mean, uh, should I just leave my email address up here or how, how should I? Sure. Um, we could drop it in the uh, chat. Let's see. Okay. If you, if you put it in the private chat, I'll just copy it and paste All right. it. I'll do that. I think that's a good idea. Do you have a Twitter account, anything like that? Yeah, yeah I have a Twitter account also, and uh, we can, so it's, here we are. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, and the, the website again is uh, blockstudio.io. Blockstudio. Oh, what is that? Oh, because I've been using the blockstudio.io. Well, there are two websites. The other website is block. Um, I got a little too clever. And this also exists, but this and that are the same, really. So you have blockstudio.app Block and blockstudio.io. Okay, we'll Block throw those Studio. in. There. So people should bookmark those, come back to them. Once once Raul gets his, uh, his resources allocation figured out, his website is getting crushed at the moment, which is good. <laughs> That's a good problem. Yeah. Um, so we'll we'll share out um, all of that information and and make sure that people are able to connect with you. This was really really cool, um, uh, and and I think that I think that this is a really neat application for especially early early programming learners. I think this could be a really neat scaffolding option to go f in into that in that like two to grade two to three to four spot. Um, yeah. You know, in particular, that's where I would use it for sure, um, and then and then and then move into some other stuff later. Uh, I think that this would fit beautifully in there, and then you would definitely get kids in those younger grades that would be so good at it in grade four that you know they would use it in older grades to make these more complex games. Right. And I think what we're trying to do, one of the interesting things we're trying to do, and actually, um, little plug, the, the game-based learning community on Participate, if you go into the resources area of the game-based learning um, community, which if you go scroll down on our Twitch profile, down at the bottom, the link to the community is down in the, in the, in the panels. Um, but if you go to the resources there, we're, we're building a game engine um, uh, spot there. Uh, and we'll put this in there too, because um, one of the things that I think we're trying to build is this place where we give students, you know, a bunch of different options, like use the game engine that you want to use to build the yeah. game that you want to build. Uh, Cause I, I think I'm finding that with a lot of these engines that we've kind of demonstrated over the last couple of weeks is that there's, even when they look simple, there's hidden complexity in almost all of them. Uh, and so you can really get into the weeds um, with this just as much as you can get into the weeds with Scratch and and all of these other ones. And there is a lot of really cool depth to almost all of these engines um, that I really, really like. So you can keep it super simple for the grade two, threes, fours that you want to really onboard with something like this. But then you can really ramp it up um, pretty high with with this other stuff. Um, any last words, Mr. Isaacs? No, I just I just want to thank Rohul again. Um, I always enjoy the time we get to spend together, and always love revisiting uh, Block Studio and seeing where it's you know how far it's come and all. So thank you. Uh, I will be posting this video on the YouTube channel um, and certainly inviting my students to view it. Uh, I already posted this morning that they can use this as an option for one of their mini game projects uh, that a lot of them are working on now. So we'll see what comes out of that. All right. Well, thanks everybody for joining us. Thanks Rahul for, for joining us. Um, thanks for creating such a really cool product. Uh, if you're around folks, we're back online on the, the Twitch stream again at three o'clock uh, today's Wednesday. So we are round three of the Minecraft roller coaster extravaganza that we're, we're in the process of. That's been a lot of fun. Uh, so we'll see you again later. Bye everybody. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Thanks.